G'day, my name is Jack McLean and welcome to this week's Prepare Like a Pro Live Chat Sunday show. This week, this key topic will be all about staff communication, how to create a team of virtual assistants and how to keep them connected by using apps like Slack, Zoom, uh, creating meeting agendas and actionables and who's responsible for certain actions, um, importance of scheduling your tasks on Google Sheets and Google Docs, live documents that both yourself and your team members can access and update live, uh, invoicing, why it's important to track um, happy clients to non-happy clients from a rapport point of view and how the team can work together on helping to serve the, the clients, or in this case, athletes, and ultimately how to um, improve your communication system. So if that's something that interests you, make sure to stick around uh, as I'll provide some tips that I wish I knew three years ago. If you're new to the YouTube channel, please sub hit subscribe to never miss an episode. We post useful content for strength and conditioning coaches and footballers on a weekly basis. And on this episode, I'll update you on all the things for the podcast episodes for the week, as well as live events. Some useful tips for footballers. We're going to be discussing a power tip on how to train like an AFL speed forward and a speed defender. So if that is your position uh, make sure to stick around as I provide some practical tips on how you can not only get more of the sharing, but also increase your pressure acts and improve your overall athleticism on the field to ultimately help your performance. Okay, let's get into this week for the strength and conditioning coaches running their own business and particularly working with remote uh, team or, or virtual assistants in my case. So Slack is something that I have, a, uh, is an app to communication platform I love it. I've been using it for well over a year and a half and each of the virtual assistants, so I've got four, have their own channel. So it's a private, think of it like an SMS um, platform, but you can add attachments to it, videos, uh, links to websites. Um, so it's a great platform for dynamic one-to-one um, -one conversation. But also when we have a certain project within our team where there might be um, Revs, who's our website manager, and Cheryl, who manages our marketing, and we want to talk about um, how we want to build awareness and a marketing campaign for our upcoming academy, for example, then uh, we'll have Revs in there, Cheryl, myself, and also Hazel, who manages our podcast, um, might be in there. And we're all discussing all things around um, building awareness and a marketing campaign for the academy. So you can also have projects where numerous team members are in there for a specific topic. Um, and unlike WhatsApp, where um, it, it can get quite messy if you've got a lot of chats with, with Slack. As soon as that task is done, that project is complete, you can just then delete it and, and move on. So it's really help, helpful. Uh, it's one of the apps on my phone that I do have notifications on because I know when I do get an alert um, from particular channels, um, then it prompts me to, to engage in those because they're usually urgent um, uh, business-related um, um, things to work on with my team members. So I highly recommend Slack. And uh, it's a super easy platform to use and it's free as well. Zoom is the next one uh, that I'd recommend using. So, or any face-to-face -face, uh, communication with your team members, just for that connection point of view, I'd catch up with our team members probably every couple of months. Uh, we do also use Loom, which is free for videos under 10 minutes. So for five to 10 minute how-to video, sharing your screen uh, and just um, sharing information, it's a lot easier through um, video opposed to explaining it in written form or an email um, or in Slack, then I'll, I'll use Loom for short videos and then I can send that link to Slack to the um, team member and vice versa. They can send me things on how to educate me on how to um, potentially do some new updates on our website, whatever it might be, or, or, or teach me a skill. Um, so it's a great way for providing feedback using Loom. And then for more connection-based sessions, meetings, um, stuff where there's a whole host of things to go through every couple of months, then I find Zoom is is the best place to go. Uh, and obviously for one-on-one -on -one chats, you can have a free account for an unlimited time, so no added costs. Um, and uh, yeah, with the to make the, the meetings effective, I find it's helpful the day before to send it an agenda to who, whoever's in the meeting and um, who's responsible for certain areas that we wanna cover. And then after the meeting, once you've gone through uh, the agenda, to then email who's responsible for certain actions. So then it's really clear within your team who's working on what going forward. And if you do that, then you, you shouldn't need to catch up um, 
as often because it's an effective process rather than things just things getting missed and the communication having uh, holes. So yeah, Zoom's my favorite platform for that. And then, like I said, using Loom and both free for those circumstances. Uh, having a live scheduling, uh, content scheduling document like Google Sheets is super helpful uh, for your whole team to be able to access and update depending on their roles. So like I said with Cheryl, she manages our marketing, has or manages our, our podcast. So we'll have a Google Sheets um, that we can update as soon as I've booked in a new uh, guest on the podcast and a thumbnail needs to be created. Um, then I'll update their guest name when the date is booked in. And then that can prompt show to create some social posts, maybe a newsletter to our um, members, as well as uh, Hazel will know that when the podcast is going to be released. So either on a Tuesday or Friday, we release our podcast for the week and I'll put in a date. So that just keeps things nice and simple and clean and organized. So I definitely recommend using Google Sheets. Google Docs uh, is also another live document that we use whenever we're um, working on developing a certain area. So it might be blog posts. It might be... Um, show notes for the podcast. So anything where me and my team are working together on a, ta on a task together where I'll create the organic content and then Cheryl will then post it on our socials or, for instance, for the podcast, I'll add in all the people mentioned, the highlights of the episode, and then Hazel will then put that into publishing the podcast when it's up to its release date. So Google Docs are super helpful for um, any um, scheduling and tasks that you're doing working with a team. From there, our, in terms of working with our strength and conditioning coaches, they're all uh, we all work remotely, and um, because it's a, a national team, so having a monthly invoice where I pay my coaches every month, and then within the invoice, and they're looking after an individual athlete, they'll we'll just use a simple traffic light system. So green, if there's the rapport's going well, the, the re athlete's responding well to the program. Uh, and the coach has a feeling that things are going really, really well. Therefore, they're going to continue on the program for the following month. Um, so no action needs to be made or, or no um, particular uh, conversations need to go on between me and the coaches or the athletes to help out. Orange and sort of on the fence, not sure, hard to read. So a conversation might start from that, uh, either with me or the coach or, or the athlete, if I can help out in that, in that circumstance. It might be because they've got an injury or they're in a form slump or... Um, they're just not responding very well with the program, whatever it is. And then red is the coach flagging that uh, the athlete is coming to an end to the program. Uh, maybe they've communicated that or simply um, they're just getting a feeling that it, it's just not quite clicking for the, for the athlete. So that's where the coach and I will straight away get on a call, see if, if I can shed any light in that circumstance on how can we do things differently or um, – can I help out with the athlete? Do we need to find a, a different time slot? Maybe the coach is fully booked and, and the athlete wants to book in more sessions. So we need to find a different coach or a different schedule, whatever it might be. So we try and be proactive basically and, and see if we, it's much easier to keep an athlete on your program than it is to find a new athlete. So we always want to try and eat from a results point of view, you're always going to get better results when an athlete is happy and they're enjoying the program. Um, so from a, and that's a big value of ours is athletes getting results that they're putting their hard work into. So if they're on our program for longer, we know we get better results. So that's a system that we use. I um, definitely recommend if you've got a remote team of, of coaches or staff, then that's a highly effective tool. So hopefully these uh, apps and systems that I've put in place over the last few years uh, help you if you're a new to running an online coaching business um, or maybe you're currently running one and you're just looking for some um, fine tuning. Uh, and also let me know of some systems that you use. So if there's anything that you find helpful, I'd love to know. So either comment in the section below if you're watching in YouTube or send me an email at jack at preparelikeapro.com. I'd love to know uh, your systems. All right, let's get into this week's power tip on how to train like an AFL speed forward and defender. So firstly, um, some key performance indicators from a physical point of view for speed forwards and defenders. We have clearly speed is important. Um, so when we're talking about speed, we're talking about in short distances, so hard accelerations, um, going from a, a static or on the jog pace to a, rap, a really high speed pace. So maybe 80% of your max speed in a short distance. Your agility, so ability to react to um, an opponent for a defensive act, pressure act. Um, or your ability to cut and evade an opponent when you've got the ball, and then repeat speed, so repeat high-intensity efforts that are a little bit longer in, in duration, so thinking like 40-metre, 60-metre, 80-metre efforts, so 
for those half forwards that work really hard on the way up and then they're able to get at the back to get a goal. Um, they can get ahead of their uh, opponent. So not only put pressure and try and keep the ball inside 50 or within their forward half of territory um, by working hard with repeat speed efforts, but also then dart back and, and make um, impact on the scoreboard because that's when we know for today's chaotic nature of the game and how fast paced it is, if you can make the most of a turnover, um, then you've got a good opportunity to kick a goal. So that repeat speed effort is is critical. So they're the three big three that I want to focus on today. Um, in terms of what moves your needle for uh, improving these qualities, your body composition is massive. So making sure you're not carrying too much fat or muscle as all these metrics will be negatively affected because they're power to weight type of movements. So to be a dynamic speed forward and, and defender, you want to make sure that you've got a uh, good skin folds, uh, you're not carrying too much muscle, you're not carrying too much fat. So get assessed by a dietitian at your club to see where you sit and then you, you might compare that to the best speed forward in your club or, or compare it to yourself when you've played your best game and you know what your um, body composition is, um, then that can be a target, which is always the best way to go. Um, however, if you don't know and you're working towards finding that sweet spot, then that's where it can be helpful to see um, guys that you look up to, guys and girls, and see where do they sort of sit and you can find some trends within the data. If you're not sure, just reach out to me and I'm happy to provide some more information depending on your height and your weight, of course, it's quite individual. Secondly, assuming you have a well-designed gym program, we want to really target your lower body strength and power. So getting the fundamentals right and have your key exercises that you attack every week. So everyone's going to be a little bit different. Um, for some, it might be the box squat. For some, it might be the trap bar deadlift. Uh, but we want to make sure we've got one of those that we're doing um, and we're working really heavy uh, early in the week and you, you're improving your strength in that area. Then from there, some plyometrics, either before your field training or um, after your field training, within your field training, however you, you can fit it into your program where you're jumping for height and you're jumping for distance, both single leg, double leg and lateral movement, and then pairing this in with your ability to cut off one step. So that ability to, you're moving at speeds in a straight line and then rather than shuffling your feet, which takes more time and then changing direction, you're able to just stop on a dime and um, and cut and change your, your lane that you're moving. So doing that off one step, like think of an NFL um, running back, they're elite at doing this, and it's starting to drip feed into the Australian culture of our strength and conditioning athlete development now. So the game's moving faster, so your ability to be able to do this from an offensive point of view is critical. Um, so making sure that you're uh, you're working on that, whether you, you're doing a drill where you're just running 10 for a five-metre cone in front of you and then you're cutting off that cone on the inside of the cone. Make sure we're not our foot's not going outside of the cone. Um, so that's really, really important. Your foot's relatively close with your centre of your mass, so underneath your hips when you're cutting. Then you might progress that drill to a forward hard XL and then a partner out the front is pointing in which way they want you to, to um, change direction. So then that way you're reacting to a stimulus. And then you might progress the next drill, get a whitey, um, to uh, running out in the same distance, but the a person who's pointing out the front in the previous drill is now closing a lane. So let's say you've got four cones lined up and the person holding the uh, standing on the drill, standing in the middle, you're facing them, you accelerate as hard as you can, and then they're just going to close one lane and then you're cutting in and into the free space. So that's an example of some ways that you can do it in a sort of controlled manner. And hopefully that then will then transfer into your um, football drills, which is obviously the most specific way. So that's the offensive side. The defensive side is shuffling your feet. And that's where we want to, from a when you're trying to lay a tackle, you don't want to just be going flat knacker when you're 20 metres from that tackle or 10 metres away from it because you're more than likely to be faded and, and miss the tackle. We want to think of it like, I remember Rich, the combat coach at Hawthorne, would talk about it all the time, where you, you're hunting your prey, like think of it like a cheetah, where they're um, you know, corralling the content, uh, the opponent, uh, and then once they're in, within um, reach, that's when they strike. Okay, so that's where shuffling your feet can be really, really important um, when you're in defense. So drills like agility grid, which you just create a four by four meter grid, you're in there for 20 seconds and you've got someone pointing to different cones um, and you might do three sets of three reps of that one. So you're, you're practicing forward shuffle, back shuffle, side to side. And then a T drill, so you create T shape into your cones, you accelerate out to the top of the T, shuffle to your left, shuffle back to the right. So that's really, really important drill. We want to make sure we're not crossing over our steps, but we're keeping in that athletic stance the whole time when we're moving in that um, shuffle drill.
So they're the two key areas from agility point of view. Repeat speed, I love 60, 80, 100, 120, and 150 meter efforts. So they're really, really good because you can maintain a good speed um, while um, doing those. So obviously if you're, uh, you've are you got a really good base and um, you've been training for a number of years, then you'd probably do the higher end, the 150s, because you, you've, you've got good speed reserve. And then if you haven't got that yet and we're still building base, then we want to try and just do like the 40s or 60s or 80s. And then we just give you some rest periods between those efforts. So you're still getting this similar volumes, um, but we're just – there's not as high density. We're just breaking it up a little bit. So we're getting that speed, which is the priority for repeat speed training. Hopefully this helps for all our speed forwards and defenders out there. Uh, make sure to like this episode. Uh, and if you're a coach out there and you're wanting to join our academy, we have 100 free spots on our wait list. And the, the wait list is also going to have a limited time offer of only $20 a month after that month trial. So that will never go up if you're a part of that wait list. So it's, it will, as the academy grows and we're getting more high performance coaches on there and content, uh, obviously the value is going to increase over the years uh, and therefore the membership may go up over or will go up over the over the years. However, for those limited time um, wait lists, g'day Geordie. Um, Geordie's going to be on there, which will be awesome. Uh, he's an intern coach, so he gets a free access anyway. Um, but yeah, if that will release in 1st of July. If you're a strength and conditioning coach or you've got mates that you think would benefit from joining this community, make sure to share. Um, I did a recent post on our Instagram, so you can comment in that video. It's our recent reel uh, for some more information on there. And then once you join the waitlist, every week I'm going to uh, engage with that waitlist email by sending you snippets of what to expect um, once the membership is live. We're just currently building out the website, but working hard on it and really excited for what's to come. So for all the strength and conditioning coaches out there that want to work in elite sport and make an impact, but also develop your online business, um, this is something that we're going to be working on together. So jump on the wait list. The website will be in our show notes. It's academypreparelikeapro.com.au and you can head uh, click in your email address and then I'll update you with some more information of what to expect.